hello everyone. My uh, thank you all for taking the time to attend my presentation today. My name is Young Pyoju, and I'm responsible for software development related to next generation solutions at SK Hynix. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, and I'm excited to share with you on my, uh, the memory solutions that SK Hynix is developing to prepare for the AI era. Uh, to begin, I'd like to talk about how AI is transforming the world we live in. Actually, uh, why it's not, uh, it's very difficult to predict exactly how AI will change the future, but we can already see its profound impact on the computer systems we use today. Uh, there's no denying that uh, the AI revolution has sparked the development of extreme and cutting edge products, um, many of which are dramatically more powerful than uh, what was available just a few years ago. Uh, if we look at the top 508 uh, high performance computers as shown in the tree map on the left, uh, it becomes clear that the computing landscape has shifted, excluding the bright orange boxes uh, in the le upper left, uh, which present systems without dedicated accelerators, uh, we can see the significant presence of GPUs. Uh, there is a uh, this is a clear indi indicator of how GPUs have been the center of modern computing. Furthermore, systems that once relied on traditional cooling methods are now turning to liquid cooling, which uh, until recently was mainly used by hardcore gamers only. This shift highlights the growing demand for extreme performance across the industry. One of the key components driving the performance is memory. Solutions like HBM, uh, which delivers high band higher bandwidth and QS ESSD, uh, which provide best uh, storage capacity, are playing critical roles in meeting the needs of AI-driven systems. HBM, for instance, uh, has been remarkable growth in both capacity and bandwidth, while QS ESSD solutions are now capable of offering hundreds of terabytes of storage within a single rack. Uh, all while delivering the performance that today's data intensive uh, applications require. So I believe uh, we are uh, at a turning point where new extreme products are not only emerging but also succeeding. Uh, these products are critical uh, for driving the future of uh, AI powered computing systems. With that in mind, uh, let's turn our attention to the next generation memory solutions that SK Hynix is preparing to address the changes. One important thing to note is that uh, AI grows by consuming data. Uh, as AI evolves, uh, the amount of data required to train and operate smart systems is increasing rapidly uh, year after year. As you can see in the graph on the left, uh, data sets are expanding exponentially, reflecting the growing need for memory solutions that can handle this increase. Interestingly, uh, the right uh, graph highlights an important issue that was raised, raised during a talk at the supercomputing event back in uh, 2016, it's almost uh, eight years ago. Uh, it showed that memory bandwidth was not growing as quickly as CPU's CPU performance. This problem, was, uh, uh, this problem has only worsened over time, uh, particularly for GPUs, uh, when, uh, even when using GDR memory struggling, struggled to keep pace. This is where HBM comes into play, uh, offering, the high, offering the high bandwidth needed to overcome this bottleneck. But performance is not the only consideration. Uh, since AI grows by consuming more and more data, uh, the demand for memory capacity is also rising alongside the demand for performance. For instance, as shown in the right graph and the uh, accompanying table below, uh, the context strength that AI models need, need is increasing dramatically. 
while various techniques are being developed to address these challenges, the overall trend is clear. We need more memory capacity to support the growth of AI. Uh, in summary, both capacity and bandwidth are essential. However, while uh, bandwidth is tightly coupled with uh, the design of execute chips from an early design stage, the demand for memory capacity varies significantly depending on user's needs. This is where the CXL memory module comes into play. Based on, based on DDR5 technology, the CXL memory module, or CMM DDR5 for short, uh, offers the ideal solution uh, for those in need of large memory capacities. This module is a CXL 2.0 Type 3 device supporting up to 128 gigabyte of memory and will be available later this year. To further increase capacity, uh, we are also exploring the use of new cost-effective media or different media types, uh, depending on specific use cases. The CXL interface also supports pooled memory, uh, which means it's not limited uh, to a single server. This led us to develop a pooled memory solution based on, based on the CXL interface which we call Niagara. Niagara is the world's first CXL-based disaggregated memory pooling solution. And it's a CXL Type 3 device that offers up to one terabyte of memory, supports up to eight hosts, and includes features like DCD, uh, which means dynamic capacity device from CXL 3.1 spec, and HMU, which means Hotness Monitoring Unit from CXL uh, 3.2 spec and all built on based on the CXL 2.0 implementation. There are two key use cases for this technology. Uh, first, memory pooling allows servers to dynamically allocate memory blocks as needed, giving them greater flexibility. Second, memory sharing enables data to be shared uh, directly between servers avoiding the unnecessary duplication and improving its efficiency. We currently have a prototype of Niagara version 2.0 and are collaborating with several companies to develop orchestrators and other use cases for the technology. We are particularly interested uh, in enabling memory pooling in orchestrators like Kubernetes and supporting industry standards like Redfish. Uh, moving on to another exciting development, we have CMMX, which integrates the concept of processing near memory. Uh, since CXL is based on the widely used PCI specification by accelerators and supports a memory semantic protocol, so it's a uh, most suitable interface for realizing the concept of processing near memory. So uh, actually, CMMX was originally called CXL CMS since, uh, from last year, but uh, we renamed this prototype to include it into the CXL memory module lineup. Uh, this is the world's first uh, CXL-based computational memory solution, providing up to 512 gigabytes of memory and equipped with uh, uh, C-Core and ML acceleration hardware engines and dual Cortex A72 cores. We believe this solution not only expands the uh, system's memory capacity, but also improves application level performance and system wide energy efficiency by minimizing data movement from the CPU and memory. So, CMMX excels in operations that involve uh, scanning large amounts of data and performing simple calculations to obtain small amounts of uh, results. For instance, we've uh, applied operations such as scanning and filtering for big and semi-structured data, as well as case nearest neighbor searching. And for embedding vector data, we implemented storage and uh, approximate nearest neighbor search operations also. Uh, through this, this approach, we 
have been able, uh, able to achieve significant improvements in both performance and energy efficiency. These results are particularly impressive given the, that uh, this is still just a FPGA-based prototype. Based on this prototype, we collaborated with SK Telecom, the South Korea's leading telco. We optimized uh, and tested this prototype in their multimodal AI service platform. This year, uh, we successfully completed pilot test uh, using data formats based on Apache Arrow. Uh, following this collaboration, we are beginning to implement FICE, uh, which stands for Facebook AI Similarity Search to secure a more general purpose software solution and uh, to promote further collaborations. And we are very open to collaboration on various fronts, including developing program models and exploring user cases. We are also interested in uh, collaborations related to the control SOC also. Additionally, we are investigating new form factors and different media configurations to expand the possibilities of this technology. Now, uh, let's talk about uh, software a little bit deeper because one of the most critical, crucial aspects when it comes to new memory solutions is uh, preparation of a ro robust software ecosystem. CXL memory, unlike traditional memory, is recognized by the system as a memory that operates without a CPU. So this brings unique challenges because uh, compared to conventional DRAM, CXL memory may be slower or it may use different type of media uh, with distinct operational characteristics compared to DRAM. In some cases, uh, the memory might be even be located outside the server itself, connected via a cable like Niagara that I explained. Uh, to make full use of CXL memory, we have developed and released an SDK, uh, which we call HMSK. However, the development of this SDK was not our only focus. Uh, since last year, uh, we have been working on improving Linux to ensure that uh, it, operate, it operates smoothly with CXL memory. Several key features we implemented have uh, already been upstreamed into the Linux kernel mainline as shown here. Regarding HMSK, uh, it's important to note that a system level SDK like this uh, requires changes to be made not only to the SDK itself, but also to the underlying software, including the Linux kernel. So all the changes we made during the development of HMSK uh, have been successfully upstreamed into the Linux kernel mainline already. So no separate backporting is required for any open source project for now. For example, HMSK version 1.1 uh, has been integrated into Linux kernel version 6.9 uh, and HMSK 2.0 uh, was incorporated into Linux kernel version 6.11. And HMSK 3.0 fully aligned with uh, other open source projects like Numa CTL and Damo. This means that uh, anyone in the industry can use these features without needing to worry about uh, compatibility or creating their own custom kernel. Uh, by contributing to the Linux kernel mainline and other major open source projects, we hope to ensure that CXL memory is easily accessible to everyone uh, without the barriers often created by proprietary software. Now, uh, shifting to PIM and PNM, which means processing in memory and processing near memory, solutions, there is still uh, some debate in the industry about whether these technologies should be categorized as memory or accelerators. Uh, if considered as memory, uh, they could be either served as system memory or as specialized memory in, uh, dedicated to specific applications. To explore these possibilities, 
we began to enabling DEX, uh, I mean direct access memory, and then tested using PNM as system memory. So uh, we got the research and uh, the result revealed clear advantages and disadvantages to both approaches. If you want to use PNM as system memory, then we found several complex issues arise. Uh, for instance, we need to address virtual address translation between the host and the device and ensure, should ensure cache coherence and manage coherence, uh, synchronization between CXL.mem and CXL.io. Uh, on the other hand, using PNM as application specific memory may offer less flexibility, but uh, it's much easier to manage over. In practice, uh, if the use case is well defined, I think using DEX memory tends to be the better option as it simplifies the architecture and provides greater stability. However, this is something that depends on the particular requirements of each application. Uh, regarding programmability, we, my initial question was whether we really need one of these type of devices. Uh, after a thorough consideration, uh, the answer is yes. Uh, we need a programmability to support user-specific data formats and functions which are essential for the effective uh, utilization of this technology. So at present, uh, at present, we are looking at three possible options for providing programmability. Uh, the first option is to enable support in widely used frameworks like Onyx, PyTorch, and Fies, which would allow developers to uh, take advantages of these memory solutions with minimal changes to their existing workflows. The second option is to provide uh, compiler tool chains that facilitate development for specific user cases. And the third option, which we are still exploring, involves uh, developing a more uh, comprehensive program model that could offer even greater flexibility. I think the most important thing to note here is your input. Uh, we are eager to hear from the community and the industry to understand what kind of prime models or tools will be most be beneficial to you. So our goal is to pro uh, our goal is to ensure that whatever solution we develop is tailored to meet real world needs, and your feedback plays a crucial role. Uh, in shaping the, this process. Uh, in conclusion, uh, SK Hynix is uh, committed to pushing the boundaries of memory technologies in the AI era. We believe uh, that the next generation memory solutions we are developing, whatever it's CXL memory modules, put memory systems like Niagara, or processing near memory solutions like CMMX, uh, whatever will, it will, they will, play a pivotal role uh, in shaping the future of computing. We are also deeply committed to collaborating with both industry and academia to make these solutions as a reality. Uh, whether you are a hardware developer or a software engineer or a researcher, we are always open to new ideas and partnerships. So we are excited to work with you uh, to turn the innovations we've discussed today into practical, impactful uh, solutions that address the uh, challenges of tomorrow. Uh, and finally, before we wrap up, uh, I'd like to invi uh, invite you to visit the SK Hynix booth, whether you can see demonstrations of the solutions I've talked about today, uh, and you will have the opportunity to learn more about our products and prototypes as questions and even explore potential collaboration opportunities. Thank you.